His name is John Foley and he wants to tell the story of of the care and the attention and the love that he and that he and his late parents Morris uh, Foley, Mossy Foley and Catherine Foley of Arnanochine, Clorglan and, and formerly of both Brookfield, Brookhill in Beaufort got in their final, final years um, Catherine passed away in at the end of 2019 and Mossy, John's dad passed away uh, just at the end of last month. John, thank you very much for joining us in studio this morning and first of all, my deepest sympathies to you on the loss of your father Mossy and indeed the passing of your mother Catherine a number of years ago. It's it's a difficult passage for, for everyone but tell us why, exactly why you're here this morning, why you've come into studio in Tralee when you should be preparing to go back to America where you, where you live and work. Why, why are you in studio this morning? Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you, Trassa, for the reason I'm here is because, apart from the obvious, Trassa invited me here. Um, this started off as a thank you to St. Columbanus because I was overwhelmed. Um, my cousin, who had worked in the nursing sector, or if that's the correct word, sorry, circles in Kerry for years, Marion Walsh, um, advised me that St. Columbanus was fantastic, above and beyond, brilliant. I can't think of better words to describe it. There are better ones, but I just don't know of them. And this is the Columbanus, St. Columbanus Nursing Home in Clarny. In Cl- correct. Um, and my expectations went far and beyond what I expected. Just me being overseas, time difference was really, really hard. And no matter when I called early in the a.m. or more, more often it was late in the p.m., they set up the technology, the, the iPad that I bought my father that I could FaceTime him. It was never a problem. 99.9% of the time, no problem, John. And then when I thought about that, I thought it wasn't just them. It started off with the HSC in Cologlan, a lady, Sharon Williams, that helped me get it all started. Um, The teams that came to the house, and we became friendly with the girls and guys that came to the house were brilliant. Um, When that ended and they went to the hospital, Kerry General were brilliant. Um, The district and then St. Columbanus. Uh, Just before I... Get, get back to St. Columbanus. Uh, I want to also, can I put in my cu- my next door neighbour, Mary Sullivan, um, that was phenomenal with my mum and dad and was one of the reasons why they stayed at home as long as they could. So thank you, Mary, and my other cousin, thank you, Marion. And finally, I just, I thought this was going to be a short email that I would send to Teresa and that she might take a minute to say it on air and that was my thank you and I was happy and it went beyond that and she called, she emailed me and I spoke to her yesterday. Wonderful lady. Everything is beyond expectations the way things are going and here I am today sitting in her office. So thank you, Teresa. Well, thank you, John, for coming in because it's not easy. And I know your, your your dad, Massey, only passed away at the end of May, so that's 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 you're you're still grieving, and and we'll continue to grieve. Um, tell us first of all, how old was 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 your dad when he died? My dad was ninety seven years and ten months. He was exactly eight weeks short of turning ninety eight. So, as they say, he had a great innings, um, and undoubtedly, again, he probably would have passed a year or two ago if it wasn't for the wonderful care of St. Columbanus. So thank you again to Susan English and all the staff. I wish I could name you all. You were wonderful. And you work in the in the US, so obviously as your parents were getting older, you, you were trying to, from afar, trying to ensure that um, th- they got the best care and attention that they they that that, that they, they needed to receive. And and your 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 mother your mother Catherine when she died, was was Massey still living at home at that stage at the end of twenty nineteen? He was. My mum got dementia in the last few years of her life and my father was wonderful. He went from a farm labourer as a young boy in Beaufort. He went to work on building sites in post-war England. He always wanted to come back to Ireland. He, he, as he said to me, he bought a purse and saved his money. He bought a farm in Ardnachnocky in Cologlan, um, where he basically 21 years as a kid in Beaufort, 31 years in London and 40 plus back in Cologlan. Um, he looked after my mum. Um, she got dementia. It got too much for him in the end and when she was hospitalised, 
Um, I came back from the US and I stayed nine months with them in COVID time and um, helped get everything into place. So what usually took a month or two months took nine months because of COVID. Nobody had experienced that. But the glass is always half full. I reconnected with friends, old school friends and new friends that have helped me. And the last thing I want to say, because I'm probably talking too much, is that um, people in America say to me how lucky I am to have the support in Ireland. And I wonder, is it the, the amount of support I've got in mid Kerry? Is it a mid Kerry thing? Is it a Kerry thing? Or is it an Ireland thing? I don't know. But mid Kerry and St. Colin Mars have been wonderful to me. So thank you, everybody. And, and what struck me, John, when you contacted us was your real determination to say that the, the, the care that your father and your mother received in their final years, that it wasn't just merely out of a sense of duty, you felt it was driven by a real sense of love and respect for them. And you've, you, you said to me that you felt that that love and respect is so present in so many people who work in our, our healthcare system, who work in our nursing home s system, who work to care for older people. Yes, um, unfortunately, some things with press, social media, all you hear is the bad news. And I love saying that there's a lot of good news out and we should have a good news channel. What Trassa just said, it, it blew me away and I wish I was better with words to say things that could better words to compliment them. The HSC was brilliant from day one. Uh, there are financial restraints on it. There are stuff, but that's life in every country in the world you go. Uh, America's medical system, I won't get into it. That's a topic for another day. They might have their technology, but the compassion is here in Ireland. And um, I just want to give a big thank you to the HSC. And I hope, I know other people out there have had the same good, good, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Good experiences with the HSC. Um, th they were wonderful, Trassa. I, I wish I could describe it better, but they were wonderful from from the home help in the house to the district or to the general of the district and finally the final chapter, St. Columbanus. Again, with the capital, they were brilliant. There's an African saying that it takes a village to, to raise a child. Do you think that also applies to when people get older and yes. they may need extra supports? Definitely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that saying of yours when I go back to America. Yes, it does, Trassa. Thank you for that one. You, do you believe that Massey, your dad, who was two months short of his 98th birthday when he, when he died in, in May, do you believe his, his, his life was extended by the fact that he, was in, in, that he received such good care and love in St. Columbanus's? Definitely he was. Uh, definitely it did. On his... He left home on the 7th of March 2020. My mum had passed on the 3rd of December 2019. I came back for the funeral and stayed with him for the three months. I had to go back because I had young children and a wife in America. And I organised the neighbours' help coming into the house, help, as long with the HSC, other people coming in that I paid privately to help with him thinking I might get a couple of months out of it but I got a phone call one Monday one Saturday morning on the 7th of March 2020 at 4am US time saying that he was going in a going in an ambulance to Tralee I hopped on a plane that night and I got back to the general in Tralee Sunday morning and it was the start of Covid and I thought wow, I got here just in time, he's not going to make Monday. He had a chest infection, kidney infection, and pneumonia. And he was such a healthy man that he survived everything. And then, in answer to your question, the long way around is, definitely he wouldn't have lasted that long without the care and medical attention of everybody. Again, from the district, or from, sorry, the general to the district of St. Columbanus. Yes, the answer to that question is yes, Trassa, he wouldn't have lasted. And you mentioned there earlier, because you work in the United States, how good staff were and in facilitating you contacting and communicating your dad through through technology, through FaceTime. And I suppose that's another aspect of it, because there's there, there are there are negative sides to technology. But when it's used in that way, it's it's a marvellous aid that you could in a different time zone, thousands of miles away, communicate with your dad. It was it was it wasn't, it is, it, technology is brilliant and yes, when you can use it in the right way for stuff like that which is 
helping my father through his hours, you know, his last hours. Then there's the fun side of it. We all listen to the Kerry games on the radio. We all listen to the Premier League on the, on, you know, it, there is the fun side of it too. And there's the necessity part of it. Emails, life. It's phenomenal. And yes, technology was great. What was your dad like? And what was your mother like? Uh, they were wonderful. They were bubbly people. My dad could never do enough for his three children. Um, I have two older sisters. Um, he was all about us, us, us. And I wish that sometimes he did more for him, him, him. My mum as well. When we were young in London, um, my mum used to take us to Ireland as kids for our summer holidays. And we'd jump on the train and the boat. In those days, there was no Ryanair and no money. <laughs> you know, <laughs> times were tough. And my dad, as a young kid, he just worked 24-7 in London. He came back to Ireland and he bought his farm and he worked 24-7 in Kilorglan, but he was at home on the farm, you know, so you've seen him more. He, he, he was wonderful. My mum had a heart of gold, my dad had a heart of gold, and I hope that I'm a combination of the both. And I I know you're grieving, but do, do you feel that the way they, they left this world, that it, it was the departure that they both deserved after working a hard life, after working so hard and, and, and being so loving all their lives? I... I guess I never thought of the word. yeah tra yes I guess trust I never thought of that um, yeah death is not easy and listen they lived a great life so I can't complain they had a wonderful life my you know both of them had wonderful lives you see tragedies I had a cousin that passed there a month ago Noreen O'Reilly who was good to my mother she passed with uh, I think it was pancreatic stomach cancer and she was 56 leaving behind a 16 year old daughter I mean that's a tragedy I had another cousin Carol Savine many years ago in his 50s died that's that's a tragedy like for my mum and dad it was a celebration of a life it is sad of course we miss them and it happens of course I miss them and I being selfish I was driving in today and thinking what I was going to say and I said wow I'm going to it's like I was on a little bit of holiday. I'm for the first time in my life. I'm not 24 seven thinking about FaceTiming dad. Is the time difference okay that I can FaceTime him? I can sit back and watch the Premier League or watch a Kerry game and relax. But it's going to hit me in another week when <laughs> I've had the break, you know. <clears throat> but um, th they're not a tragedy. It's sad, but they've had a great life. The other tragedies were my cousins that I've mentioned, and there's many more stories, you know that. They're gone 30 years, to, 30 years too soon, yeah, you know? Absolutely, and we're so sorry for their loss. Very Thank sorry you, for their loss. Every, everybody has a story, Tress. I, I just happen to be the lucky one that you invited me here today, and I want to say thank you to you, to you Tress, and the Radio Kerry team as well in case I forget at the end of this. Well, thank you for coming in, to, keep coming in, John, and speaking so eloquently. And if I could just ask you one more thing, just touching on, on, on what you said at the start or, or, or making reference to what you said in the start, that the, the, you, you felt that Ireland's health system is, is, is imperfect and and the the healthcare system in, in the United States, there's a, well, if you have the money, obviously, in the health insurance, you, you can avail of that. But that... I was wondering if you had any thoughts as, as someone who of, of, of you know of Irish parentage, of someone who grew up in England and who now works and lives in the United States. You know, what are your thoughts? And maybe this is too big and deep a question to ask, particularly since you've you've only recently lost your father. How do you think we as a society here in Ireland or Kerry or mid Kerry, because you you you, you spoke so well of, of of the support you and your family ha have have got since your dad died. How do you think we as a, as as a society as a community you know, deal with death when it comes? I think the Irish um, and just I I spent nine years of my life here too, Tressa, um, before I ever went away. Um, I think the Irish as a community celebrate life um, which is we're all sad but they celebrate and you remember the happy things you remember everybody remembers their mother their father their sister their brother in, in happier times there's nothing we can do it's the world that we were put in and obviously nobody lasts forever there's nothing we can do but as a as a, as a, as a, as a population the Irish do a, a very good job of celebrating life I think you know um, the Americans, 
In all my 37 years there, I could probably count on one hand how many funerals I've got to because in America, when I went and I was 22, I I worked with and made friends with people of my own age, so you didn't see death. When I came back to Kerry and talked to my mother and father, it was Uncle Paddy, Aunt Mary. They died because it was just... They were the old, I didn't know any old people in America. There's been one or two tragedies, and I've been to one or two wakes and funerals in America, but I could count them on one hand in all the years. D yes, they celebrate it too. Um, I recently went to one in Connecticut for my middle daughter's best friend's grandmother, and they did a wonderful job too, but I just think there's something... It's the old saying, there's something special about Ireland, how friendly, how welcome, you know, the Cade Miller Forger, 100,000 welcomes, there's something about it that this would be the best place in the world if the weather was a little bit better. <laughs> well, we can't complain at the moment, it's been... <laughs> it's great pretty, at the moment. It's been great the last few But it's, it's a wonderful country, and me personally, I have no regrets in life, and I've enjoyed... America has given me money that I've travelled the world, and... I've seen a lot of other countries. I've been on five continents, and you come back to Ireland as always. I come back to Ireland, and I love watching the Kerry games. I love watching the Irish rugby games. I watch, love watching the Premier League. That's that's my hobbies outside of the reality of life. You know, um, Ireland is a wonderful place, and it's you know, it's it really is. And hopefully, in a couple of years' time, I can spend a lot more time here. You know. Well, John, thank you so much for coming into studio this morning. It wasn't easy. We've been speaking to John Foley, who got in touch with us and sent us an email that he wanted to thank so many people in the HSC, University Hospital Kerry, St. Cullen Banis's, uh, Nursing Home in Killarney, Home Helps, other, he other health and, and, and nursing care and, and workers for, for the great... Um, care, attention and love I don't think that's too strong a word to say shown to his late parents um, Catherine who passed away in 2019 and his father Mossy who, who died at the, the end of May and who would have turned turned 98 on, on July 14th uh, John just said it was important to thank people, the good people um, individuals, cousins so many people and and the staff working in the various health bodies and, and care institutions and who 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 gave his father a great um lease of life and love over the last number of years any final words john before we we finish uh just one final word i've said thank you to all the people that i started out to say thank you i want to thank Trasha murphy and the team at radio kerry first of all i want to thank Trasha for the very prompt reply to the email she replied to my email I'm guessing within the hour and me I didn't look at it for like two hours later not used to that prompt reply and when I emailed back with a phone call she replied straight away and uh, that was phenomenal thank you Trassa thank you Kerry Radio um, I can check it off my bucket list now I've been on the radio and TV in my lifetime <laughs> um, brilliant 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 thank you Trassa Murphy thank you Radio Kerry thank you people of Mid Kerry and Kalani and obviously Radio Kerry as well.